Who's hungry? And you want to see why they call it the wake? All right, we're at our table. We have a bread bowl, or rather, a bowl stuffed with bread. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what kind of roll it is, but served in a nice little tin. Comes with some herb butter and sea salt on top. Looking forward to this. The sea salt really makes that. That's really good. Taking a look at the menu, I'm debating starting with a wedge salad. I always wanted to try bone marrow, but I haven't had the guts to try it yet. The raw bar, probably not hitting that, although tomahawk steak, $65. And here's a look at the dinner side. The tomahawk is the only thing I see that's an upcharge. The regular steaks all included, including sauces, sides. Very nice. In this place, so far, the service is already, we just sat down. Service has been great. There's a drop of water spilt after pouring my glass and they came right over, like hustled over to make sure that drop of water did not remain on our table. I went with the wedge salad. For dinner, I went with the filet. Although I was really torn between the hanger steak, but they do have that at other locations on the ship. It's been a while since I had a good hanger steak, so I'm looking forward to that. And I got some Bernays sauce and some fries from my side. Steph went ahead and got the king salmon. So when you're in the wake, it feels pretty exclusive. It's not like, we don't feel like we're eating with hundreds of people. Uh, we're literally seated with maybe 10 people that we can see, which is pretty awesome. There's Steph's clam chowder. Fancy clam chowder service. <laughs> and there's my salad. It's little boats, little salad boats. I feel like I just want to pick these up and eat them like little <laughs> jalapeno poppers, but that's probably not appropriate. Steph says this is the best clam chowder she's ever had. Tiny, oh, tiny have... portion though. Do you need another? I could eat probably 10 bowls of this. <laughs> also have shrimp. Oh, has shrimp? Mm -hmm. Very, very good. They tricked me. Mine tastes just like a salad. Appetizer round. What's the grade? Okay. A. I give mine C. It was a salad. That's on me. I didn't branch out and try something crazy. As far as salads go though, B plus. The bread was definitely good. And the butter. So Steph got grilled salmon with lemon sauce and caviar. Uh, roasted potatoes with onions, unfortunately. And it looks like a cheese, cream, Bernays sauce. I'm not sure. That's my Bernays sauce for my steak. Got my steak fries and my filet. Here's the really cool thing. This is a whole roasted giant garlic clove, which is awesome. Or I guess not a clove. What's it called when it's a whole thing of garlic? Bulb. A bulb. That's a giant bulb. Medium rare filet, check. So Steph says, salmon, pretty standard fare, but she is a real fan of the potatoes, the roasted potatoes that she got. I can't emphasize enough how good this filet is from a crew standard and honestly just a steakhouse standard. That is a really good cut. And it's not just a brine prepackaged, you know, uh, uh, I, I just can't believe how good that is. That is so good. You know, I could kind of tell it's gonna be good because some crew steaks you get and they're perfectly like flat across the top. This has texture and 
it's a real cut of filet. Yeah, I mean, we just went to a steakhouse <laughs> at Christmas and I got filet, and I think this is better. All right, I'm talking too much about my steak. The garlic's also a lot of fun uh, to have along the side. Kind of difficult to eat. I don't know if anyone has a strategy for getting the clothes out a little bit easier. The verdict on that one, Steph said her salmon was average, about a C. Could have used some more lemon or uh, fun flavors through it. It was pretty just straightforward. She really loved those potatoes. A on those. My steak, A+. Plus. The fries were fries. Skip the fries. Just get the steak. Now on to important matters of dessert. Lemon cheesecake, baked Alaska, apple tatin, tatin, apple tatin. There's the lemon cheesecake. We're splitting that because we eat and are so full right now. Don't ruin it. All right, ruin it. <laughs> Wait, do you need an assist? Do we? Oh. Ooh. For your coffees, they actually have sugar cubes. Brown sugar and regular granulated sugar. It's been a while since I've seen those. I really like this cheesecake. It's it's more like a fluffy custard, which I guess that's what cheesecake is. But it's just so fluffy and light on the inside. You got kind of a hard lemon candy shell with the raspberry and the cookie crumbs. Pretty, pretty good. That's it from us at the wake. Uh, it's really good. There's not a lot of room for improvement. <laughs> so I hope the other restaurants can live up to this one. I'm slightly concerned we started with the best first, but hopefully it only gets better from here. We'll see. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, there is the food court where you have sandwich place, ramen bowls, which are pretty awesome to have. They are the type of ramens you can get. Uh, essentially miso, tenkatsu, or spicy tenkatsu. Uh, spicy is actually pretty spicy when you get the, <laughs> to the bottom of the bowl. Here's a taco stand, which is very popular. There are juices and then also soda machines where you get Coke products. All that's included. Steph really like this. There's actually a little ice cream cart here that usually has popsicles uh, or assorted frozen treats. Early in the morning, so it's not quite open yet. There's also a diner you can sit at and order, just like you would at any shiny diner out there. And the diner offers an all-day breakfast. So you can get any of these items served up to you all day. Also a burger bar. Get a burger however you would like it. Decked out however you want. Bakery, which is where all the good stuff is. Yeah, there's bread, but the desserts are really what we're talking about here. Something a little healthier, the daily mix. They'll usually make salad bowls, but at breakfast, uh, you can go ahead and get uh, oatmeal bowls, yogurt, etc. Coffee stand's pretty impressive. There is also a actual barista stand where they'll make you custom coffee. It's right around the corner here. Let's take a look. Yeah, th this is where they'll actually make you some very nice, fancy coffees. A little bit of upcharge, but not too bad at all. And if you're just popping in, it's really convenient. They have these little grab-and-go stations, so you can just grab something and head on out. Uh, there's stuff from charcuterie to desserts and everything in between. And what's really nice is uh, you can walk up and order stuff and take stuff, or you can sit down and a server will be right with you, take your order from the menu that you pull up, and bring it right to your seat for you, so you don't even have to get up. It's really nice. We're sitting across from the Independence of the Seas at Nassau, and for breakfast today, so let's do an avocado toast and salmon toast with chips, which is an interesting side <laughs> for breakfast. How are your assorted pieces of fancy toast? I waited until you took a bite, just like a waiter. Yeah. Now, I'll be saying this a lot through this <laughs> vlog, but the, the service here is uh, pretty impressive. We 
just are constantly kind of being pampered, and it's really nice. It's nice to have an adult-focused, service-oriented cruise where they really take care of you and are really attentive. I ordered a yogurt berry bento box. So you got yogurt, fresh berries, in-house made granola, breakfast of champions. Yeah, this is a delicious and healthy way to start your day, I think. Rab raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, berries and cream. You know what kind of boy I am. Berries and cream, berries and cream. I'm a little lad who does berries and cream. Really cool entrance into Pink Agave, the Mexican food offering here for dinner on the ship. Seating's kind of fun. You got these big community benches. I'm trying to decide what this is a uh, plastic cactus <laughs> art. So, your food offerings are small plates medium plates and large plates he said uh, pretty much you can order as much or as little of anything you see here based on how much you want to share or not share so let's take a look at what we want to get Steph's gonna do this quites which is probably uh, grilled corn kind of a, a lote Mexican grilled corn dip I'm interested in this agua chile might try that maybe uh, chicken enchilada and then also the ribeye steak dish I might try that Steph pointed out she really likes the silverware here because it has that <laughs> rainbow reflective metal coating pretty neat <laughs> instead of uh, bread service they give you kind of a nut party mix with uh, chili powder and Steph just got hit by the spice all right my tuna Small plate appetizer is out, and Steph's esquites grilled corn. They look pretty good. I'm thinking more of a sushi tuna, sashimi, nigiri, spicy tuna roll kind of guy. Steph's more of a fish fan than I am. For me, the tuna is a little too tuna-y, too fishy if you will. Not as uh, clean tasting as sushi that I'm used to. We are finding out most things here have a bit of a kick. They're really pretty liberal with their chili powder, which I appreciate. Of course, you can't be at the pink agave eating Mexican without a margarita. Here's our chicken enchilada. It's pretty good. I actually wish there was a little more heat to that. There's barely anything. A little more pepper or seasoning, but still very good. I could eat that very quickly and many of them. Steph got the chili relleno, potatoes and corn. And I got the ribeye, covered in Mexican sauce stuff. Steph said she's a little underwhelmed with the chili relleno. Uh, mostly a chili doesn't have some heat and could use a little more salt and pepper. But she's a southern girl, as she says. Uh, and my steak uh, cooked fantastic. Uh, pretty thin cut, but still very tender. I'm super impressed with pretty much any steak I've got on this ship. Whether it be Philly cheesesteak style, filet, ribeye, I'm just... The steak on the ship is better than any cruise I've been on by far. I think that's a wrap from the pink agave. Steph did like her chili reunion. Just want a little more, bit more heat, but you can't necessarily control, you know, what kind of pepper you get. And my steak was cooked excellent, really tender, thin cut, but still really good. Um, I think all the technical execution by the kitchen here is just really consistent and really good for all these dishes. I still think I like the wake a little bit better. Yeah, so so far the, the wake's the uh, front runner for favorite place. For dessert, we got a uh, chocolate bar. <laughs> it's more like probably a chocolate mousse with caramel or something and fruit on it. It's like a, it's like a chocolate cake made with corn flour. Like a chocolate cake made with corn flour. Yeah. They took a uh, corn tortilla and ground it up and mixed it with oh. chocolate. So it's like gelatinous? Like a cake. Okay. It, it tastes 
<laughs> All right, so we have a chocolate corn tortilla <laughs> with some fruit on it. And then these are what we're looking forward to, these chocolate tacos. Look at those with a chocolate ganache or Mexican chocolate to go on top. How fun. Steph's a big fan of the chocolate tacos. This is apparently a berry sauce, not chocolate. It's kind of dark. I couldn't tell. Uh, this thing... Uh, it's kind of like an impossible chocolate cake, like the one they make with no eggs or limited sugar. Uh, not a huge fan of that. But chocolate tacos, they're it. <laughs> yeah, Steph's excited to see me try it. I actually know this flavor. It's like a Mexican caramel. Maybe even like with goat's milk, maybe, but it's it's that really sweet, gooey caramel with crunchy chocolate crust. This is good. It may have only been one margarita, but Steph's already saying that this chocolate taco beats Carnival chocolate lava cake. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. Do you agree to these statements that you've made? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And the, uh, the berry sauce that you put on top, that really add some tartness to the sweetness oh, it's so good yeah they are really good I like the berry sauce how many plates of those could we eat five plates of those ten tacos coming up surrounded by bubbles oh, that was really nice that was a good little dip into Mexican flair tonight is the ship's Italian offering, extra virgin. This seems more along the lines of what you see on most cruise ships. Oh, nice. We have a nice window seat. Darkness. Quick look at the appetizers. I'm definitely getting some carpaccio. And then uh, they have some meat and cheese selections. You can actually choose your pasta for your main dish over here. Um, and then the rest of your course. I know Steph wants the Brussels sprouts. I'm probably gonna do New York strip. And we'll see how the rest goes. We have our bread and olive oil with some balsamic vinegar. Kind of pour your own plate. That's Steph's. That's mine. I am very, 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 very excited about the carpaccio. So much so, might have gotten two orders. Uh, there's Steph's Romain salad egg anchovies i would call that a caesar i think and then their meat mini meatballs those look really good too we got a little feast and we haven't even ordered our main course yet how's the carpaccio very good yeah yep. <laughs> just straight up good i've had the main meatball too i really like those got enough cheese on that one yeah those are really good too yeah very happy with the appetizers so far Adios, carpaccio. It is gone, it is in my belly, and it is delicious. Those mini meatballs were really, I think, the stars, though. Carpaccio was good. Uh, when you got a good, nice little seasoned slice. Very nice, I like, carpaccio is one of my favorite things. These meatballs really caught us off guard with how yummy they were. I mean. I didn't know some crispiness. All right, there's bacon. Gotcha. So I said, you should point out some crispy pieces of bacon in the sauce. And yeah, I'm not sure what the balls were, all, were if they were veal or pork, a little bit of pork and veal maybe. They were very good. I, yeah. I don't remember the last time I made notes on meatballs. But <laughs> these were notable meatballs. Here's our lineup, Steph's Brussels sprouts. She got beef bolognese, pasta. You get a pasta. Oh, okay. So it's polenta over here with her Brussels sprouts. Uh, I got the carbonara and a steak. Of course, New York strip. Sign me up, let's go. All right, so the quick overview, <laughs> at least of our opinions. Uh, Steph likes the polenta, but it's a Brussels sprout dish and there was only like maybe three Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Kind of broken up in there so brussels sprouts are light on the brussels sprouts uh the beef bolognese uh she likes that says it could use a little bit of salt i kind of agree 
Um, <laughs> that's what's under my steak. Uh, that's like some grain, something that came with it. I don't know. I chopped it up and put it on my carbonara. Uh, the carbonara, the really thick noodles, almost like an udon. Uh, is what it reminds me of, but the taste is, is really just kind of butter noodles, like not a whole lot going on there. And this steak is probably my least favorite I've had on the ship so far. So appetizers here, awesome. We kind of wish we just did another round of apps uh, versus the entrees. A little, a little bit of a letdown. Not too much to complain about, but we've been spoiled. The wake was really good. At Lick Me Till I Scream, get it? <laughs> Variety of gelatos, ice creams. We went with the strawberry malted milkshake ice cream with a red velvet cone. I'm getting the light so you can see it. It's very pretty. Yay! And there's Steph. What exciting flavor did you get? Vanilla! <laughs> Quick lunch. Steph got the classic burger. And I went for the impossible. We'll see. This is a hell of a bun. All right, impossible burger, take one. Tastes like a, a burger, a very cheap <laughs> quality burger. But it, that can replace a burger just fine in my mind. It's impossible. How? Uh, yeah. I'm happy I tried it here because it's funny if you go to a lot of burger places on the mainland, the impossible burgers can be like 15, 16, 17 dollars when a regular burger, you know, 8 to 12. So, glad I got to try it here. It's, it's serviceable. I'm okay with it. We stopped out at the dock house. It's the grill on the back of the boat. Quick look around the scenery. <laughs> There's shrubberies. I should bring another shrubbery. Found the shrubbery! You must place it here beside this shrubbery! Uh, so we're going for here. I got the hanger steak and Steph got some grilled shrimp. Let's go with our Coronas. There's Steph's grilled shrimp. You can tell it's a new ship because they're actually growing vines up here and you can see the little um, hooks, eye rings that they want these vines to start growing up and covering this wall. That's pretty cool. There's my hanger steak. It's basically like a grilled little kebab, some pita bread, some veggies chopped up on it, and uh, some kind of crema. I got it without the anchovies because anchovies are icky to me. <laughs> Those were really good. <laughs> and for, for quick eats, again, you just sit down, you raise your little flag here, and server will be right by and bring you whatever you want. It's, it's awesome. So much nicer than waiting in line and grabbing a buffet and waiting for someone to cook your food. You have to sit down and they bring it right to you. And again, service is super quick and really awesome to have. We stopped at the social club that does specialized hot dogs, ice creams. Uh, I got a Philly cheesesteak hot dog. The hot dog in there. And uh, pretzel with pepper cheese dip and Steph got plain hot dog with the works. Another quick service place is the pizza place. We stopped in here. You actually, they have this nice outside eating. You can pop inside and place your order and they give you this little pizza puck that lets you know when your order is ready. They can custom order you anything or they have a set menu of items they can also do. Let's take a quick look at the uh, menu. We're trying the pretty fly for a white pie. At the tables, they actually have vinegar and olive oil. I haven't seen that before. They do have salads you can grab in there for quick service as well. Here is our pretty fly for a white pie <laughs> pizza. You can see the garlic cloves on there. I added a bunch of red pepper. It's not even flakes, it's like round red pepper. Comes out really fast, heads up, uh, with some Parmesan on my side. Steph staying all natural. So that's your half, that's my half. Hot and just out the oven in a good way. That's awesome. I like it. Uh, once you bite that garlic clove, you get a lot of that flavor. Yeah, I, it's more of a snack, I would say, this size pizza. It's not gonna fill you up too much, especially if you split one between two. Yeah. 
good little snack. We're headed into Raz McDazzle. See that sign there? Yeah. Steph matches it. <laughs> so Raz McDazzle is supposed to be like the health food with some vegan options, and I'm not doing any of that. Plus, they're a big fan of stripes here, apparently. Glowing ball. Thank you. All right, so it's a little, got some trendy music playing. Yeah, I just, but it's uh, not too heavily attended tonight. So again, the menu has a bunch of healthy, uh, vegan options, pescatarian stuff. And then it goes, if you must get something, you know, meaty. And then it just has straight out naughty. And this is where I'm gonna be living tonight off the naughty list. Probably some fried chicken. We did go ahead and get some drinks. Steph got the gym bunny. <laughs> she liked the uh, name more so than anything. And I got the agave colada. Basically seems like a margarita with some coconut and some mezcal. Mezcal's really hit or miss with me. It really depends on the mezcal. I usually prefer just tequila only, but we shall see. Don't play with the balls. Mine's prettier. Mine's out for a stroll with its umbrella. Steph's is fuller. What the hell happened? I don't know. Cheers. <laughs> Looking ahead for dessert, they actually do milk and cookies. You can get loaded cookies and a flavored milk. Uh, we'll see how that goes. They also have rainbow churros. I think uh, we might do the churros and the cookies. Steph's is very refreshing and nice. Mine's very foamy and tropical. Pineapple and coconutty. It's good. I think I like hers a little bit better. Steph got the Cobb salad. We also got the Shishito peppers, which is actually a side item, but I like them for appetizer. If you haven't had Shishito peppers, get them. They're just basically peppers roasted in butter, usually just some sea salt. Maybe a little chili or extra seasoning on it. They give you some lime to season with. And you're usually guaranteed, probably between these two plates, there'll be one hot pepper. It's really fun. It's kind of like the lottery. It's never you get a plate full of hot peppers. It's usually one out of the batch. And it's also one of those things that depending on where you order it, they're prepared differently. Right. Just a little bit different seasoning or a different method of prepping them, but fairly consistent. There's going to be one hot one out of the batch. Fingers crossed, Steph gets it. In case you forget how to eat, put the pepper in your mouth and you eat it. Leave the stem. No heat yet. No hot ones over here. Try two, let's see. Swing and a miss, no heat for us. That's alright, they're still very good, even if you don't get a hot one. And relatively healthy, <laughs> compared to some of the apps we've been chowing down on. There's the fried chicken looking very nice with a hot sauce, looks just kind of buffalo-esque. Had Steph's, is it, what is it, black bow tie pasta? Bow tie pasta. It is pork. Zebra bow tie pasta. And then salmon. Can't get away from the salmon, can you? Always gotta get it. And then the indulgences, smoked bacon, cheesy tots. Oh really? Oh yeah. She says this is a lot better than salmon at the at the wake. Was that? Yeah. Well, good. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Well, this is the place that specializes in healthier options, supposedly. I wouldn't know. All right. So final verdicts: salmon and potatoes underneath, banging. Uh, zebra pasta. I'll show. Not much else. <laughs> Just for show. Uh, chicken, decent. Actually, wish this had a bit more zing to it. That uh, kind of buffalo hot sauce could use more. And the, the chicken itself needs that because there's not much seasoning, if any, in the chicken. It's just battered and fried. Tater tots. Uh, you can imagine in your mind what those taste like. I think if you've ever experienced tater tots before in your life, the bacon—that's the highlight for me. Thicker than the breakfast bacon you find on board. Smoked. I wish it was a little bit chewier, maybe a little more candiness to it. I don't think there's any brown sugar or anything on it, but it could use that. But still pretty good. Uh, this is my favorite thing out of what I've tried. 
There's our rainbow churros. Very pretty. The churros look nice too. Okay. And then our cookies, uh, I'm not sure, maybe ginger, just plain sugar, brown sugar cookie. Oh, that's red velvet? Oh, I can't tell in the color. Red velvet, pistachio, assorted chocolate, maybe peanut butter. And there's Steph cinnamon milk. I want to see you try that. Okay. Cream inside the velvet cookie score. So for me, a uh, big swing and a miss over here. Stuff like the churros. They were cold. The ice cream just tastes plain. Uh, the cookies. <laughs> that says it's vanilla. It doesn't look like vanilla. Vanilla and moon rock. <laughs> I stole your joke. Uh, yeah, the cookies just not much about them. Probably the chocolate and whatever one has the most flavor. Uh, yeah, not, not a huge fan of this one. All right, so quick rundown of the restaurants we did. Uh, first night, the Wake, and then Pink Agave Mexican. You're gonna have to fill in. Yes. What was the next? Extra Virgin, the Italian. Extra Virgin, Italian, and then Razzle Dazzle, the health. I, I didn't understand any <laughs> health options there. That's I me. I think it was just, it's more vegetarian. Vegetarian oriented. Based. But they had they had plenty of options for everyone else. We didn't do the Korean barbecue. We didn't do the test kitchen. We'll get those next time around. So best rankings for me were the wake, um, then Italian, then Mexican, and then Razzle McDazzle. <laughs> do you think, is that pretty accurate? Uh, we chatted about this a little bit before. Um, I couldn't really rank them based on the one, restaurant. two, three, four as a whole because I had they were just vastly different for me in different entree areas. All right, so let's go down. Uh, what'd you like for starters? Appetizer. Uh, best appetizer was absolutely the wake uh, and the Italian were tied hundred um, percent. What do we have at the wake? I had the clam chowder oh, at the wake. You, you've had the clam chowder right. twice. And I had it twice because we went back for breakfast specifically because I wanted to get the clam chowder again. Right. Um, and then at Italian, we had the carpaccio and the meatballs. Yeah. I think I think Italian was my favorite appetizer. So good. Yeah. Um, my best entree was the razzle dazzle. I had the salmon, but I also had the salmon at the wake. But that was dry, and this was just, it was perfect. It was crusted, it had a little mustard sauce, it was perfect. And then the best dessert was hands down Mexican. The chocolate tacos were yeah, so good. Those, those were really good. We did a fair amount of damage <laughs> <laughs> to the food resources on this ship. Um, thanks for coming along with us, listening to our crazy opinions, maybe in some regards. Uh, hopefully we can get back out here and try a few other things. We do really like this ship. Uh, the service, most of the food, 85% of the food. But you got to try it to see what you like, right? So thanks for coming along with us. Enjoy your quest. See you next time.